you'd be amazed to know that the Large Hadron Collider at the European Centre for Nuclear Research, or CERN, has been reactivated after years. Due to recent advancements in the reinvigorated ambitions of particle physicists, the major game of comprehending the nature of the cosmos has thus begun. A revolution is about to break out with a new found particle. Some scientists have referred to the newly found entity as ghosts, since they are so elusive. The Collider has been generating indications that the cosmos may be concealing something amazing from mankind. What recent discoveries has the Collider made? Why was it kept a secret for so long? What is the universe's point of origin? This video explores all the cosmic riddles. Join us as we investigate the scientists at CERN who have just announced a terrifying new discovery. The largest and most potent particle accelerator ever created is called the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. It's situated at the CERN Laboratory for European Particle Physics in Switzerland. The Big Bang's initial circumstances, which lasted for a billionth of a second, can be replicated using the LHC. These involve circumstances that, since a few microseconds after the Big Bang, have never occurred naturally. The LHC will almost certainly be mentioned in any headline concerning subatomic particles, since this facility is so important to the contemporary scientific study. For the first time, ghost particles have been found by physicists inside an atom smasher. News of the discovery caused a sensation, since neutrinos are infamously elusive. The discovery gives researchers studying subatomic particles an entirely new avenue to explore. Each square centimeter of your body experiences around 100 billion neutrinos when you view this video. An electron is 6 million times heavier than a neutrino. Neutrinos neither react with any sort of substance nor move nearly as quickly as light. They are so elusive, in fact, that people often compare them to ghosts. However, you can capture neutrinos if you work really hard at it. Neutrinos have just recently been identified in a few investigations. These include the Antarctic Ice Cube Detector, Fermilab's Miniboot, and Japan's Super Cameo Candy Detector. They all employ the Cherenkov radiation technique, which is essentially an indirect form of the neutrino detection. According to the Cherenkov technique, a particle that moves through water at the speed of light leaves a faint blue glow in its wake. When a neutrino directly impacts an atomic nucleus, scientists search for this luminescence. Only neutrino signatures that can be found using this approach are those that arrive from the Sun and travel through the Earth. Neutrinos cannot be found at the LHC on their own. This is partly because the Collider uses magnets to guide particles along a circular collision path, which is dotted with detectors. Chargeless particles like neutrinos are not affected by these magnetic traffic lights. Scientists from the Phaser Collaboration developed a novel neutrino detecting system called the Phaser NU to look into this. Lead and tungsten metal plates that are thick are used to make this. These plates include an emulsion, which is a collection of layers that can sense light. Neutrinos have to be made to collide with the atomic nuclei on the metal plate to create particle byproducts. As they travel through emulsion layers, a reaction between the byproducts of the emulsion and the neutrino stamps the particle shape. The researchers discovered that some of the markings were created during this process. Compared to earlier attempts, Phaser NU was superior in many aspects. For instance, 50,000 tons of water are needed to produce Super Cameo Sweets. Phaser NU, in comparison, just requires 29 kilograms. Additionally, it was constructed with scrap metals. Neutrino comes in three different types. The hardest to find and rarest neutrinos are tau particles. Phaser NU is capable of detecting many types of neutrinos, and it can also tell neutrinos from anti-neutrinos apart. This is when things start to get interesting. Neutrinos having the opposite charge are called anti-neutrinos. But wait, how's that possible? Neutrinos don't possess a charge. So, isn't it a point of contradiction? In fact, the opposing charge represents the lepton number of the neutron, a type of quantum number used to define the characteristics of subatomic particles. Neither neutrinos or anti-neutrinos have any electromagnetic charge. Scientists still don't have all the answers to many questions regarding neutrinos. They are unsure of a specific difference between a neutrino and anti-neutrino, for instance. Phaser NU, however, will assist them in learning more about neutrinos. The Phaser NU team would spend 2022 pursuing and catching 10,000 neutrons or more. Some of these questions' solutions will aid in addressing issues like the origin of matter and the reason why so much of it is dark. For a better understanding of this, 
we need to talk about supernovas. You might think that researchers looking at supernovas would be looking up at the sky. But here comes the twist. They are searching for answers in trees as a result of the query for more about supernovas. They are looking for traces of previous supernovas in tree rings. But how are trees on Earth related to supernovas that happened billions of kilometers away and billions of years ago? Supernovas are rare events in the universe, which occur when a star passes away dramatically. The most recent one in history happened more than 400 years ago, and there have allegedly been four supernovae near enough to Earth during the past 50,000 years. Finding signs of star deaths in trees is what scientists are attempting to achieve. But what's the game plan of researchers to cultivate this? The amount of carbon-14, often known as radiocarbon, a radioactive isotope of carbon, is the key indicator. Radiocarbon is present on Earth in extremely low concentrations. Cosmic rays from space are constantly bombarding the high atmosphere, where radiocarbon is generated. When cosmic rays penetrate the atmosphere, they combine with local nitrogen atoms to start a nuclear process. These increases are typically regarded as proof of solar flares and storms, since the Sun is a very substantial source of cosmic rays. Trees that are not close to the equator grow during the warm months or hibernate during the winter every year. This growth and non-growth pattern create a ring inside the elements that make up a tree. When the trees are chopped, you can see the ring. A tree's age may be determined by counting the rings and comparing the oldest and youngest rings as they approach the center of the tree. Archaeologists use the pattern of tree rings in the woods found in old constructions to establish when they were formed. To understand what could happen to tree rings when supernovae occur, scientists are using this information. Researchers look through the archives to determine the veracity of the supernova idea. They created a list of all known supernovae that have occurred in the past 40,000 years, and they were able to identify each one by the remnants of supernovae that were left behind in nebulae. Then they contrast this list with the data from the same period tree rings and radiocarbon spikes. How did they find out? Well, it appears that the radiocarbon spikes from eight supernovas nearest to the planet have matching periods. For instance, a 3% spike in radiocarbon was associated with the Vela supernova, which erupted around 12,300 years ago at a distance of 800 light years from Earth. A 2% rise was associated with the G114.3 plus 00.3 supernova, which erupted about 7,700 years ago at a distance of about 2,300 light years. Additionally, there was the Vela Junior, which is said to have taken place around 2,800 years ago. The planet saw a radiocarbon spike of 1.4% at that time. Additionally, they discovered supernova HB9, which occurred between 1,000 and 4,000 light years away, or around 5,400 years ago. This one coincided with a 0.8% increase in radiocarbon concentrations. Scientists are hopeful that the tree ring's approach will enable them to accurately determine the time of numerous supernovas that have proven challenging to date to confirm the breaking ridges discovery. Additionally, they will learn more about how stars erupt. So, what's your takeaway from all these? What do you think about the origin of the universe? Drop your thoughts in the comment box below.